Thank you so much, Keith. We're so glad to be here on this Thursday edition of The Next Right Thing. Don't forget to tune in on Saturday at um, the Spirit World, 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern. Adam, when we are talking about the saints and heaven part two, because we have re- just, we have received just an abundance of e- uh, emails and feedback from our spirit world listeners on how they really wanted us to continue and, and deepen the discussion on envisioning heaven. So we're so looking forward to Saturday's the spirit world. Today is Halloween. And Adam, we're going to discuss, is there anything really positive about Halloween? Well, you know, in a sense, there is. Halloween, and, and we covered this last year on the spirit world in real depth, but Halloween is, is a holiday that has a lot of layers that kind of built up over the centuries. It's not simply all good or all bad. It, it has many different traditions that kind of wove together to make it what it is today. All that being said, I think that, you know, the month of October and the the, this holiday on Halloween, um, I think there is a certain amount of extra interest in the new paganism that's arising. And so there's an extra interest in like witch fairs and occult shops. Like I saw news stories on our local news here um, with the reporter going into an occult shop where they, they sell doing witchcraft spells for people and they sell crystals and you know, sage and and all of that stuff. And the woman who was being interviewed, you know, says she's a practicing witch. Um, and there's also been kind of witchcraft fairs um, going on leading up to Halloween and some of the some of the sections of the city here. And then, you know, I'm hearing from north in our diocese, Deb, um, in one of the towns, you know, I'm getting questions from parishioners because in these relatively small towns, like three different witchcraft shops have opened selling, you know, crystals with supposed powers and and different kind of superstitions like that. So, you know, with the history of Halloween, it it has good aspects and then it's been kind of co-opted or, or, you know, kind of the occult has tried to steal it and kind of make it their own. But I think the more important thing right now in our time, Deb, is that the, the new paganism that's coming back as people become less and less formally religious and they're taking Mm -hmm. on this kind of vague paganism. Hmm. I think that's, that's the real concern in this month. And and on this day is there's a lot more people going to experiment and learn about witchcraft. Remember we talked about the spirit stores that sell the costumes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what did you say about that again, where they're made or what's been stitched into some of them or or something of that nature? Is there, is there a connection there? Well, I think it depends on who's been sourcing, um, where where the materials are sourced from. Um, some of the costumes that are more overtly demonic have demonic sigils on them. And a sigil is just a symbol. That just means a symbol. Um, but in, black magic, they would use symbols to like draw them on the floor of the wall and then do a ritual in order. And that would be part of calling a particular demon. Um, The other thing, you know, that that they sell is a lot of Ouija board themed items. And, you know, it's not just them. I'm not just picking on them, but a, a lot of this stuff comes out around Halloween. And the problem with the Ouija board is I mean, some of the worst cases I've seen in terms of possession and exorcism came from a deep use of the Ouija board that became an obsession and dominated the person's life over time. And I know for those that have just seen it as a parlor game or a toy, that sounds strange, but it really is true. It's a form of divination where you're giving the rights to your hands and arms over to a spirit to move something with part of your body. So you're consenting to partial possession the first time you use it. Um, And so, you know, a lot of the Halloween stores um, have these kind of things like, you know, candy boxes or um, clothing with Ouija boards on it or a necklace that is a planchette. So, yeah, again, it, it, yeah. it's this kind of fascination with the occult and witchcraft that I right. think is the danger. 
I don't know if you heard this. You said that in your area you're hearing some things about witches and stuff like that. But I just read recently, and I don't know if this is true for all spirit stores around the U.S. and other places that they exist. They used to go up several weeks before Halloween, then they would go down, right? So they will be a temporary temporary location and, and business. I understand now they're going to stay open and, and provide Christmas decorations. Mm -hmm. So now they've gone into the Christmas theme. It, that's a real problem, right? If they're still carrying the inventory of Ouija boards and things like that. Yeah. I mean, sadly, I think I'll, probably a lot of the folks that, that are buying the Christmas decorations, they're seeing it as more of a secular holiday and maybe not thinking about um, the leftover merchandise that's that's more, you know, explicitly associated with the demonic. Um, so, yeah, it becomes a little strange. But, you know, I, I mean, they're also a secular company and, and they're trying to, to make money. So it kind of makes sense to extend the lease and do the next holiday, I suppose. Um, but, you know, for, for Christians, I mean, just have your good holy decorations that you've maybe accrued over the years and use those. I wouldn't be going into, um, you know, one of these um, converted Halloween shops. Pop-up stores. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I agree. So I brought this up last year. I have a w wonderful neighbors in where I live and next door to me is uh, four boys and their parents. So six uh, wonderful Christian folks that live uh, next to us here where I live in Arizona. And every year it, they put up the Halloween house where ev everyone seems to gravitate towards. It has the hands coming out of the ground and half half dead buried bodies coming out of the ground and tombstones and big huge um blow up things of witches and stuff and it's not the friendly looking um items it's the you know ghoulish creepy things that are going to, and they, and lots of sounds, lots of, of guttural sounds. They have all these, these, um, this equipment that when you walk past it sensors and it, and it, and it gives off this shrieking sound and all sorts of stuff. What do you say to that? Just out of, is it just harmless fun or what? Well, so there's, there's two things that, that we know, or two threads that we can draw on for this. Um, first off is a lot of the saints and the church fathers would talk about, there's a phrase that would be used of guarding your senses. And that is essentially being careful about what you're putting into your mind, being careful about what you're looking at and what you're listening to, and try not to become fascinated with something sinful or allow something that is a temptation for you. You know, you don't want to put yourself around that. And you know, in our modern world, I think that's familiar to a lot of people that, you know, somebody is struggling with addiction and they have a great weakness for this thing. They want to avoid people, places and things that remind them of that thing and certainly not sitting and looking at the actual drug. So we kind of understand that that makes sense. Now, psychology, the other thread we can draw on is psychology, and that is we know through something as simple, again, something we've all heard of, subliminal advertising, this idea that if there's a brief image that has a positive or a negative or a attractive and calming versus maybe a shocking thing like an image of, you know, something terrible going on or, or an accident, car accident, that type of thing, we know from research in psychology, and, and I did some of this research back in grad school, so I know the literature a little bit, um, it impacts the mind, it impacts the autonomic nervous system immediately. And that is an unconscious thing. You can't control whether your body reacts to it. Your body says, oh, there's something scary and, you know, disordered there, and it gets into fight flight a little bit. And then if there's something calming and wonderful, the body goes, you know, into kind of a sympathetic uh, or parasympathetic response where there's a calming. So we know that images affect the physiology. We know that the church father said, guard your senses, because you have to be careful what you put in to your mind. Mm -hmm. I don't want to sound like a Puritan, but what I've noticed after about 20 years now working in this area and, and working with people struggling with the demonic and going through exorcisms is the enemy is very keen 
to put images of themselves constantly in the mind of the person and to constantly evoke horrible ideas and images in those people that are trying to help the person because they want to they want to insert themselves into your mind mm -hmm. so this is a long way to say to get around to saying it may seem simple and superficial and goofy and on the surface you could even feel that way but I guarantee those memories are going into your memory bank and it is affecting your physiology and it's the kind of stuff that would you know feed into nightmares if you saw that in a dream you would say that was a nightmare um, so is it gonna make your head explode just because you look at these decorations obviously not is it a tiny 1% a little bit more of horror and fear and disorder yes um, and the enemy wants us fascinated with destruction of the body which is why you know the corpses and things like this um, are used so much the idea of death the enemy is all about death in various ways hmm. so it's a celebration of death if you step back and think about it clearly these type of decorations and that's gonna cause it's gonna cause harm to us physiologically a tiny bit of harm every time we're surrounding ourselves with that you know the enemy the, when they fell they made a permanent choice to fall and that's because their minds don't change over time they were infused with knowledge at their moment of their creation they're not gonna learn anything new and so when they made the choice it's a permanent choice because they're never gonna reevaluate things based on new information like we do we get older and wiser hopefully we fell also because of their temptation but because we have a limited mind and we can amend ourselves and repent and do better we have a chance to make it to heaven to the place that they lost which is in the beatific vision they're very bitter about that they're angry with God but they can't strike at God they're angry at us primarily because God favors us and took the form of man in Jesus Christ redeemed us and opened the way to heaven for us through the yes of a woman Mary who said yes that she would cooperate and cooperate in the incarnation of Jesus and then through his passion death and resurrection okay so we're favored by God in, in a lot of ways they are permanently separated from God all they have is a rocket sled trip into a brick wall at the end at the final judgment there's no good outcome for them we have a chance to get to the place they lost so they do everything they can to drag as many of us away from God as possible they hate the fact that we were given bodies in addition to a soul they are only spirit they were never given bodies now the holy angels have no problem with that because they're accepting a God's will in all things the fallen resent the fact that we have bodies and that's um, part of why they hate our bodies secondly they're all about suicide they're all about us poisoning ourselves with excessive drink with taking drugs that harm the body they're all about any form of attack on the body mutilation scarification excessive tattoos some would argue any tattoos and from what I've seen in sessions any tattoo seems to be a stronghold for them even ones that are positive because it's a wound in the body they like to celebrate the dismemberment and destruction of the body because it represents everything about what they lost and our chance to get back to God the body does not the dismemberment and so they want to destroy us primarily they want us to destroy ourselves because that's the best chance to get us damned their ultimate goal is spiritual death not physical death but the physical death if they can get us get us dead in a state of mortal sin we're almost certainly we can trust in the mercy of God but there's a good chance we're going to be damned that's what they want and they revel in pain physical pain I've seen this you know I, I was hurt very much one time I had stubbed my toe very badly to the point it needed stitches and you know wasn't pretty 
the afternoon before a session and it was all stitched up and you know I had my shoe on and that's okay and as we were starting the session that it was just smiling ear to ear looking at me across the room in the body the possessed person and I didn't know if if it was the person I figured the spirit had already taken over their body and and I said what is it and it it was smiling and it said I like to see you in pain so they're all about physical pain and all of those negative things with the body because it, of what it represents and they're resentful of all of it so real quickly we also talked about is there is there a higher level of demonic activity because during halloween all you know there there can be drinking and carousing and all sorts of you know bad activities that take place is there a higher level then are they cel- are they celebrating along with these people that are ignorant of this Um, I think it's, I think so. So I'll give you a a data point, a real experience. Um, we had a session a couple years ago and the spirit seemed particularly resistant to everything. Wasn't really reacting much to the prayers or the holy water was acting very smug and arrogant and they often act arrogant. That's not unusual, but it wasn't progressing well. Mm Mm-hmm. And then I remembered that there were, there was a big parade in the city that day celebrating this stuff. And I set, leaned over to Father and I said, oh, there's a, the such and such parade is today. And the, the, the demon in the body turned and smiled and said, yes, they're dancing with us in your city. Mm. And so fa- Father then said, I cut, in the name of Jesus, I cut you off from any... Um, assistance that you're getting through this um, celebration in the Outside city and, Im- the... and immediately the demon was on the defensive and it looked like a normal exorcism and progressed mm-hmm. and was cast out but that was you know that was a real experience where yes it's all about the human free will the amount to which we're embracing them and celebrating their themes right um, seems to yeah seems to give them strength okay so we talked about, um, is there anything, well, we started off the segment, is anything positive about Halloween? And also, here's another negative. The candy is just so bad for everyone. It really is. Another thing that's destructive to the body, you know, I mean, and, and also the teeth. And, and we, we can go on and on. A lot of dentists, dentists can't stand the holiday, I heard. So, um, but it's All Hallows' Eve, which is the night before All Saints' Day, and it's our holy day of obligation. So there's, there's the real positive, and there's the real um, important um, thing that we need to focus on as, as Catholic Christians. So maybe go to the Vigil Mass. How about that? Instead of, instead of celebrating this, this uh, very secular celebration. What do you say? Abso- absolutely. Um, you know, we have a chance... To be saints ourselves mm-hmm. we, god wants us all to be saints it's not just for those that are canonized there's lots of saints that were, aren't known or canonized because the church doesn't go through that process for you, but we're all called to be saints be a saint celebrate the other humans that we're confident have made it to sainthood um yeah it's it's a time to get to get ready for that celebration on all saints right. day right and yeah, exactly, Deb. That's mm-hmm. the positive. I would, I would focus on that and leave, leave the occult and the demonic out of it. Thank you for listening to The Next Right Thing with angel specialist Debbie Giorgiani and religious demonologist Adam Bly. Debbie and Adam are daily contributors to the live radio program Morning Joy, hosted by Keith Downey every weekday on the Guadalupe Radio Network. For more authentic Catholic content, go to grnonline.com slash joy.